What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Make sure you click this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, we're going to be going over one of my personal side mount systems. This is a video you guys have been requesting time and time and time again. And I want to show you an update video of what I'm currently using for my everyday side mount rig, if you will. Now I will say this, I've got several side mount rigs that I use, whether I'm teaching, I'm cave diving, I'm technical dive and whatever but i'm gonna show you the one that i use the most of it's still a relatively new rig to me i've only been using this one say for about two years as far as the bc goes but the reg is still the same and i have changed my setup slightly on how i attach the tanks and stuff like that but with that being said let's jump into the, today's video and if you got any questions i'll try to answer them as well so I'll go ahead and show you uh, the tanks real quick. I've actually got these set up. I'm teaching a class, a side mount class next week. So I've got a couple of different regs set up here. But in short, I have eight side mount bottles. They are all set up identically. Well, kind of identically. I have four that have right hand valves. I have four that have left hand valves. Um, because I use loop bungees, the left and right hand valves are very important to me. I need that extra length or the extra long post here so that my loop bungees can go around. And I just like to position positioning of it. The cool thing about these eight, yeah, I've got eight bottles for me, or I've got two bottles for me and two for students, or I'll have four bottles for me and four for students because I can set two of them up for each diver as stage bottles as well. So I really like how they're set up. Uh, that being said, they are all identical with the exception of the valves as far as how I set them up, what strap system, what bungee systems, things like that. So what I'm going to do is pull my two up real quick or my two primary bottles and show you how I have them rigged, talk a little bit about why I rig them that way, and then we'll move over to the BC and I'll show you some footage of me using this equipment so that you get a better understanding of the hose routing and things like that. All right, guys, so I have my two primary bottles here, and in short, they are set up just a mirror image of each other. Now, the hose lengths are a little bit different uh, from bottle to bottle, but the tanks themselves are pretty much identical. And so we're going to start with the tanks, and we're going to start at the top, work our way all the way to the bottom, and then we'll switch over to the regs, and I'll show you how I've got the regs set up. Starting here on the left cylinder, I've just got a left-handed valve. Now, the valves that I use, once again, are basically straight off a manifold where I've just pulled the isolator out and plugged them. Actually, to be honest with you, these were purchased as is. They wasn't purchased uh, with the uh, isolator in the middle, but you can either purchase them that way or you can get an isolated manifolded valve and then take the isolator out, however you want to do it. But I got mine set up left hand and right hand on the left bottle. Uh, there is a small little looped piece of paracord. If you've seen my video on how I make entries and exits inside mount, you'll understand what that's for. If you've not seen that video, I'll link it up here for you. Uh, it's a good little watch. Um, if you dive using aluminum 80s the way I I do um, and you use loop bungees it's a great video to watch because it's going to teach you the importance of having a little loop here as well but moving on down on the left bottle I've only got one little rubber strap here now this rubber strap is only used when I'm traveling simply put when I'm storing the tanks or when I'm carrying the tanks down to the dive site this is really the only time that is technically used because my short hose of my rig comes up completely out of it and even my low pressure inflator hose comes out of it too so it's only used just when I'm storing the system now moving on down I've got just a standard cam strap here and I want to talk a little bit about the cam strap and why I set it up the way I do I've actually changed a couple of things over the years. When I first started side mount diving, this was how we attached bolt snaps. Basically, we just threaded on a tri-glide. We ran some paracord or some string or even rope up through it, and we girth hitched a um, bolt snap on, which is currently what I'm doing as well. But then I changed that after a while and I actually took this system off and I started tying the bolt snaps directly onto the buckle of the cam strap. And I'll tell you why I changed. With that being positioned to where it was, when I would reach in between my body, especially with thicker gloves, and I'd reach in to try to grab that bolt snap, the buckle was really getting in my way, and I just didn't like how it felt. It was actually hurting my hand, so I've changed back to the way I used to do it, and I want to talk really quick about positioning. If we look at the back of the tank here, 
when that bungee strap comes around and loops around this, it's going to pull that tank around. So I'll kind of demonstrate for you real quick. Imagine if I took my loop bungees and I come around and grab this, it's going to twist that tank just like that. So the positioning of my bolt snap needs to be at a 45 degree angle. And I've actually did another video, I'll link down below for you, um, on how to position your bolt snap at a 45 degree angle. So that's what that is actually there for or in that position. So as my bungees pull that tank around, that bolt snap is going to pull it back and it's actually going to keep those tanks in that position just like that. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the bolt snap itself. I actually prefer the larger style bolt snaps, especially with thicker gloves because I can get my hands in there. I've changed this as well. I used to use paracord or rope in here to actually attach it. I don't really do that anymore. I actually used, if you can't tell, bungee yes i actually double loop a uh, piece of bungee up in there it's girth hitched onto the bolt snap and that gives me the right amount of play so that when i get my hand in here i can get my whole hand in here even with thick gloves but it also helps with aluminum bottles most of the time with aluminum bottles they are going to change their buoyancy characteristics as you dive and having that piece of bungee there um it it allows me to dive a little bit longer without having to pull that bolt snap into the front D-ring on my harness, or it also allows me to dive a little bit longer without having to slide using a, a sliding D-ring. So I really like that bungee there, and you'll see it in some of the videos uh, in the future of how that kind of works. But moving over to the right bottle, it's just basically a mirror image. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about the regs and, and how they are different, but the bottle itself is basically a mirror image. But instead of having one bungee or one rubber strap, I've actually got two rubber straps. Um, and you'll see the importance of those two versus only having one here. The reg set on the left bottle actually does not stay in that rubber strap while I'm using it. So I don't need, really, I don't even technically need one. But on this one, I have two because this is my long hose setup and I'll show you how that works. With the short hose setup, I got just basically a six inch gauge here. I like running everything vertically down. I have the Marez XR25XDR tech regulators. Basically, it's a 25X first stage, which is an overgrown uh, MR22, if you will. Um, the DR second stages is an overgrown Abyss second stage. Uh, but in short, it breathes just as good as the Abyss, and I really like the heavy dutiness of it. They do have cold water kits on them, so they're environmentally sealed. You can put oil in them to prevent freeze-ups during the wintertime, so I really like that because we do a ton of wintertime diving as well. Moving on down, standard 36 inch regulator hose. I do have a 120 adapter. Some people like 90s. There's nothing wrong with a 90. I just happen to have 120, so that's what's on it. And then of course, my second stage hangs around my neck with just standard four millimeter bungee. I've just got a necklace tied and fashioned out of it. One thing you will notice, my inflator hose is a standard length inflator hose. I don't have any six or nine inch inflator hoses here. I use standard length. Now there is a specific reason that I do that. Typically when I'm using this, uh, this is going to come up, plug into my inflator, and yeah, it's a little long, but you know what? It's between my tank and my body. doesn't get in my way of anything, but the reason I use standard length is so if I ever had to wing, and not just wing these bottles, but if I ever had to pull these bottles off completely and gun them both out, I have that extra length that I can stretch them out there and it still be attached to my BC. So I can still manipulate buoyancy even if I had to push the bottles out in front. Same thing over on the right side, just standard length. And of course that one is for my dry suit. So that's why that is there. On the right tank here, it's just a seven foot long hose versus a 36 inch hose. I just had it double loop for storage. So it goes up, goes down, comes back up, and I just got it temporarily clipped off to my gauges. Obviously when I'm using it, this first major loop is gonna come completely up out of the tank, wrap up around my head, and then go in my mouth or clip to my right shoulder D-ring when I'm not using it. Same thing, just standard six inch uh, gauge here. I can pull it up, read it anytime I want. And then like I said, this one does does have the uh, second uh, rubber strap here because even when I pull this first loop out, this main long loop still needs to be secured because I don't want this flopping up behind me and getting entangled. Now, one thing that I will say, if you look at the profile here and imagine if I was wearing that, this hose is gonna be on the outside of my body. I don't actually like that. And you'll see in videos, 
you don't actually see the hose. So what I do is, is when I pull this long hose out, the first main loop, this loop gets pulled around between the tank and my body. So you won't actually see that hose exposed when I'm actually diving. I've just temporarily got it set up for video purposes just to show you how I set my regs up. All right, guys, it is time for the BCD. I've had this one for about two years now, and I've made a ton of modifications. I want to go ahead and put a disclaimer out there. I am very, very biased to Marias. If you can't tell, we are a Marias dealer, so I love their products. I will admit this, though. This system was not what it was all cracked up to be, and it took me a while to actually warm up to it. I had to make a ton of modifications to this system, which we'll talk about some of them in this video, but... I really love this system now. Starting with the bladder, it's a 34 pound bladder, which is plenty for what I dive with. I can put 480s on this system and still have plenty enough lift to stay floating. I like that the material, it's different types of material. This is almost a hydrophobic material. It's gonna be resistant to hazmatic environments. Yes, we have hazmatic environments here. Not only do we dive in it when we public safety dive, but if we're diving here in a local lake and overhead environments, say uh, boat docks and things like that, there are constantly boats leaking gas and oil into the water and I really like the fact that this is going to be protected because it's a different type of material. Now, this is your standard Cordoba material down here, but it still protects the bladder. Even if I was to rip this, look, boom, there's a flap, and then we still have the material for the mater um, bladder itself. So I really like how this is a quick dry. It protects it from the environment. Whole nine yards, I really do like the lift capacity here as well. 34 pounds lift is what I use. You can also get this in a 22 pound lift. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the pouch off real quick because it's just simply clipped to a couple little rings here, what we call hip rings here. This particular system also comes with a butt plate itself. Uh, I personally don't use it, but the butt plate just simply throws or threads onto the um, crotch strap there makes it great if you're diving steel tanks i don't dive steel tanks i use aluminum tanks so i don't need it but i do leave these hip d-rings on here simply for the pouch which we will come back to here shortly flipping it over let's take a quick look at the features i'll show you some of the modifications i made First thing is, it's just a single piece webbing harness. Goes all the way from the top plate down through the weight pouch, which is just a center spine weight pouch here. It gives you several different slots to put weight. Comes down to the bottom plate itself and then goes out through your waist strap just like a standard back plate and wing does. So what I really like about this system, first of all, is the harness. The harness is very, very pliable. It's the same harness they use on all their back plate and wings in Marez and I like how comfortable it is. You can put comfort straps and things like that on if you want to. Me personally, I don't really need it. I do have one of my custom little uh, straps here or this little strap cover. It's got my name. Uh, Carrie, if you're watching the video, thanks again for sending me this. I actually purchased several of these from her as well so that each of my system has it on it. And actually this year for Christmas, all of our staff members got one of these for Christmas. So it's pretty cool as well. Moving down on the left shoulder strap, I've got the ceramic line cutter from Marez. I have a couple of different one of these. Uh, one's a standard line cutter, one's an adjustable that I wear on my standard back plate and wings, but on all my side mount rigs, and I've actually got several side mount rigs, I've got these little ceramic line cutters. I got them positioned so I can get to it the other hand and it's not actually interfering with any of the operation of the system itself. Moving on down to the D-rings. I have working double enders on the D-rings, both sides. If you've seen our video, once again, of how I make entry and exits using side mount off a boat you'll understand why i have two here uh, this one here also has a little looped bungee system that is actually for the inflator so the inflator temporarily gets stuck on this d-ring but when i'm wearing it it comes across my chest now unfortunately a flaw here this is a very very short inflator hose and if you're a very very let's say large bone guy like myself this doesn't come all the way across my chest and if i stretch it out and clip to this d-ring it makes it uncomfortable because it pulls this shoulder strap around and i don't actually like that so with this extra little piece of bungee here it holds my inflator dead center of the chest where it needs to be and it it holds it at the right height which is below my inflator valve for my dry suit so that's why that is there moving on down you'll notice i have changed out what typically comes on the maria side mount system you get one stage bungee for this side one stage bungee for this side and they are very very thick it's about an eight millimeter thick bungee um, and to be honest with you i do not like a single bungee i prefer a loop bungee so i did modify them changed them out for six millimeter bungee and yes they are looped, but it's still one piece of bungee. Basically, what I've done is I started the bungee off here on a little quick link. It comes up, 
goes through a little slip knot system, comes back, goes all the way through the other plate or the top plate, all the way around to the other side and creates another loop bungee. Now I did just make them sliding so that it's easier to get on and off. Basically I can slide it all the way down, put the system on, slide it up into position, and now I have of course my loop bungee for the valves that I use. As far as length, very easy to adjust. I can take it up or let it out as need be. But that's my loop bungee system. Moving on down to the waist strap. Of course, the waist strap is just a standard waist strap. I've got a buckle or a little clip here, D-ring that I clip off my tanks to. I also, instead of using sliding D-rings, me personally, I prefer the double D-rings, meaning start with my tanks here, move my tanks here. Although here recently, I've not been using this front D-ring simply because with the bungee system I've got on my tanks now, I can actually leave my tanks here until they get down to say about 1000 PSI a piece versus changing them around that 2000 PSI. Of course, I have the hip D-rings here, which is what my um, pouch was attached to. Standard crotch strap with a D-ring or scooter ring here. You'll notice there's no bungee that pulls this bladder system in. The bladder system is actually attached by these tri-glides on the waist strap. And the cool thing there is it pulls the bottom of this system around. Another little thing we didn't talk about is on the back of this system, there's these little channels where bungees goes through as well. Now, I know a lot of guys are going to say, oh, if you bungee your bladder, you're going to create these uh, and trap of little air pockets on this system we actually don't all that does is pull that system around your body and you'll see in our videos it pulls it around your body so there's no taco in effect whatsoever and you don't need that extra bungee pulling that system around Let's talk about dump valves real quick. We do have a centralized dump valve here in the back. Rarely do I use this, but I really like the fact that it is protected by this extra little flap here. Um, the ones that I use, of course, at the surface are the inflator dump valve. So I can inflate and deflate here at the surface. And then, of course, I have one over here on the right kidney area as well that I can simply dump air. Now, the cool thing is maybe you don't want this on this side. You see you unscrew it, put it on this side. This dump valve goes over here as well. Um, it is an OPV, so it will blow off as well. So it makes it very easy to adjust buoyancy. Let's move over to the pouch real quick, and then I'll give you some final thoughts on my personal side mount system. All right, guys, so on my side mount pouch, uh, it's actually a pouch that's got two pockets. You got a um, mesh style pocket here in the back, and then of course you have a zipper pocket. It's just simply held on by two working double enders. They just simply clip off to the hip D rings of the system. Uh, typically, I will always have a primary reel, maybe even a secondary reel, and then two or three spools clipped off as well. They too get clipped off to the same D rings, those hip D rings there, um, or the lower D rings, just so that they'll kind of hang between my legs if you will and they're not really getting in the way um, I don't have those clipped on temporarily they're actually on my other side mount rig because I've had a side mount student this week that's practicing with it but let's look inside the pouch and see what all comes with it in the main part of the pouch I have voila another real and buoy system now this one is strictly used for open water it's not really used for overhead environments but I keep it in there as well and if I'm in over say an open water situation unless I'm penetrating a, a wreck that's really really deep I don't need multiple spools so usually I'll just take this one with me uh, to make the penetration into the wreck and then of course this one's used for safety stops things like that um, it's pre-attached so all I got to do is just simply take off the bolt snap clip it off open the uh, SMB inflate it boom it's gone to the surface does its job reaching on in of course I always keep a spare mask now I believe in redundancy and everything that I do so even my back mount systems in my gear bag I carry a spare mask you guys have seen the video in the past where I talked about um, the mask straps themselves it's always good to have extra mask straps I don't necessarily believe in them I believe in having a, another whole mask it's a whole lot easier to pull this out throw it on and go dive versus on a rocking boat try to sit here and thread that mass strap so instead of carrying a mass strap in here carry a whole new mass so got an extra mask reaching on in what else do we have boom i've got my line arrows now typically i use glow in the dark which is white these were actually made by a former student of mine um, and i've been giving these to a lot of my cavern students every time they uh, get certified in a new class i'll pull one off as a congratulations um, but that's basically what line arrows are now, typically, instead of having this clipped off to my butt D-ring or something like that, or even my shoulder D-ring, I just leave them in the pouch. When I need them, I reach back, pull them out of the pouch, um, and then I can clip them off to show which way to go out, things like that. Flipping it over to the Velcro pocket on the back, of course, all that I have in here is a set of 
wet notes. Now the cool thing about the wet notes, they're typically clipped off with a extra working double ender. So I have three extra working double enders here. I have two extra working double enders here. Yes, I am crazy. I carry that many double enders with me, but you know what guys, I actually use these all the time. As far as the wet notes, they work great for planning, logging, jotting stuff down. Uh, I typically don't use it in a back mount situation, but in side mount, I actually use these wet notes all the time. So pretty cool little system it also has an extra little pouch here inside it's just the wet notes and i've got just a standard see if i can get it open here standard graphite pencil down in there that i can write with so i really like that as well now one thing that we didn't really talk about in this video is of course the canister light i've already made a video on that showing you how i'll link it up top if you want to see it um, the reason i don't have it on here is i've got to use this canister light tomorrow uh, for a dive job that i'm going to do so i'll be having it on a standard back plate and wing but that being said that is is the um, harness system and the side mount system that I use for my side mount diving. That is my personal side mount rig. Yes, I've got several different systems that I use for side mount, but this is currently the one that I'm using several days a week now. We teach a ton of side mount courses here, and that's the one I actually prefer. It's very comfortable. It's very practical. It works for me. Um, it works great for the tanks that I that I personally use. And yes, I did have to modify the system, but you know what? That's what we do as divers. We modify our systems. I will leave you here at the end of the video with some just footage of me using this system. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up definitely share it as well if you got any questions put them down in the comment section below and i'll try to answer them the best i can but as always guys make sure you follow us on instagram and twitter like us on facebook pin us on pinterest subscribe to us here on youtube and as always guys we appreciate your business